Hey everybody, this is David at Boneyard Bees. It's a nice, cool August morning. Um, it's around about 9, 9.30. Uh, temperature's maybe 70, 75 degrees. It feels real good out. It's a little bit windy. And uh, today's video, one to, what I wanted to talk about is your honey stores the condition they should be in right now this is kind of a, a a difficult transition from fall from summer into fall and you need to check go through your hives and look and make sure that your hives aren't honey bound that's very important uh, new beekeepers please pay attention to this this is very important if you have a hive that has way too much honey then that means your queen doesn't have anywhere to lay. She's got to have space to lay. And I already had this hive broke down, so it would be easier to show you. As you uh, look at the bees, they're bringing in tons of pollen. Uh, right now, the goldenrod is, is just starting to bloom, but it's still slow. But they're bringing this uh, morning pollen in by the, by the loads. lots of it I mean just massive amounts of so that means when you see that that means that they're they're feeding babies and they're wanting to build up build up brood so now's a good time to take advantage of that and get your bees built up because you're gonna need winter bees to take you through the winter and you want to try to get you a larger colony uh, so go through your hives and look you know in a five frame if you have more than two frames full of honey you need to pull one of those I mean uh, in, a, in a good pattern some of these here uh, you can see where the they have honey near the top and uh, on this frame this was an outside frame so it, it's a mix with uh, pollen and honey I don't actually see much brood in here. Um, right there's the queen. You can see her right there. And what's got me a little bit confused here is uh Right there, see the, the queen right there. I could have swore that I set the frame on this other side that had the queen in it. Let's see what's going on here. Maybe I didn't. My memory's probably just getting old. Anyway. Um, what you want to do is look, right there's a queen cell hatched. Is look through your hives and make sure, this one, this is actually an outside frame as well. So it's got, it's got eggs, larva, and honey mixed with this frame and this actually right here was a swarm about three weeks ago no I wasn't wrong look right there right there is another queen right there Okay, well, that's the only other queen cell that I saw was that. This is actually the first time I've been through this hive since, since I've done the, since I put them in here as a swarm. Okay, well, I guess we're going to do a split right here. This right here has a good bit of honey around the edges brood in the middle 
and that's a good pattern. The, the queen that I saw on the other side was smaller and looks like she's a, a virgin queen. So, okay, well, they, what we'll do, we'll just go ahead and even make this a split video as well. I knew I wasn't seeing things. This is, like I said, this is a very young hive. It's got a lot of room to, to move. Uh, so swarming wouldn't, I wouldn't think, would even been an option at this point. But I have seen some crazy things here the last few days. Uh, I've seen swarms come in. This is one big swarm come in, I'll tell this story. And it took over one empty box, which is common here because we have empty boxes from where we sold nukes and some of the the splits didn't make it and they was unoccupied swarms come in they occupy that space which is good and it was a pretty good sized swarm on at the same exact time it's like that swarm split and some of them come up to another box up here that already had bees in it and it was relatively full hive already but they come in anyway i hurried up and moved that box moved its position moved in another box <clears throat> that had only a few bees in it where they would take up that space so they equaled out and then i checked and both queens were okay luckily so we was good there and then on the ground in two different spots on the ground was laying uh, like a partial swarm of bees very small about the s smaller than your hand and they had the queen on the ground in two different spots so I picked those queens up put them in cages and I did find one other queen that was going into a box that I put her in in one of the hives that they were swarming into so uh, a lot of you never know about these bees sometimes but we got two queens in this hive right here and uh, like I said I haven't been in this since I've putting it in as a swarm and I did see that queen cell right there but it looked like it was cut down typically uh, when they hatch out you know they come out the end they don't they're not cut down it was like of course they could have hatched and then this uh, mated queen over here found it then tore it down possibly so so what we'll do we've got this uh, right there she is again right there's that that small queen right there and I'll move her to another box and we'll go ahead and do a, a split or or what I could do as well if it was mated is I could cage her but being that it's not mated and she's probably not mated and she's pretty small we need to go ahead and just move her to another box. So, so I'll have to do that after I do the video because I don't even have the, I don't have the, I have boxes around but I don't have them ready. So, what I'll, t what I'll do, I'll give this little queen right here two frames. And I'll put this one back together with its queen. And we'll just go ahead and do a split with this. And while I'm here, I was, I was going to show you the the hive beetle problem is we're, we're getting it way under control. We're in good shape. These traps that we put in, of course, we've used them before and they, they've worked very well. They'll kind of blow away when I open this up because the wind's blowing. But you can see it just it's packed full of those high beetles. There you can see it a little bit better in the sun. And this one as well. It's got a few, but a lot of them is blown away when I op opened the door to it. So we'll put those back in. Those are working very well. They're controlling the, the hive beetles. But get back on the subject, what I was talking about with your, with your amount of honey that's in your hive. Uh, be careful, don't get honey bound because your queen needs a place to lay. You, you have to have summer, you gotta have winter bees. So 
she needs to continue to lay. If it's so full of honey, she don't even have a spot to lay, you're in trouble. Because that, that hive will dwindle down and they will die. So keep that in mind. Uh, and what do you do? Here's, here's something else that a lot of people don't talk about. Uh, okay, let's say, a lot of people say, oh, you're doing a split this late, you're going to lose that colony. Well, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Right there's going to be my split, those two frames right there. Okay, I'll check on her in about another week, make sure she's laying good. If she's laying good, and she's made it, remember we're getting towards August, or September. We're in August, we're getting towards September. And the drone populations is dropping. There's still a few, there's enough because we have a lot of colonies here to get her mated. But you gotta kinda keep that in account because as, as you get later and later, your drone population gets lower and lower. And I'll go back through that hive in about a week, make sure she's laying. And then all you need to do to, to boost that population up is go into another strong hive and take a frame of brood, of cap brood, shake those bees off and install it in this hive here with these bees. Those bees will hatch out, the population will explode really quick. That's how you can boost that. And and here's here's something a lot of people say swarms, you know, swarms aren't worth a, a flip after a certain date in the year. Look, that's old school stuff. There's ways of boosting those colonies up. The same exact way I just said. You can take that cat brood into that into you know, after you get that swarm in a box and it sets about a week, take that cat brood shake the bees off stick it in that hive boost that population up there's ways of doing that you don't have to and uh here in north georgia and and even up north people are learning how to overwinter these nukes now there's gonna be people pop up and say oh you won't do that up north well they're doing it up north uh michael bush mike mike Pal michael palmer is in uh vermont i believe he's doing it up there um Michael Bush is up north uh, as well. So they're doing it and people are learning to do it. So uh, I, was, I was watching the video on uh, Michael Bush and he was talking about how if you have one extreme strong colony, you can break that down into five or six nukes. Come now winter, you have three or four versus one big one. Then you have, you have that many more queens. So people are learning to multiply this way by, by using these nukes. And the thing is, they don't need near as much resources to get through the winter. They don't need near as much honey. They don't need near as many bees. You don't need a basketball size cluster of bees to get through in these. A lot of them get by. Uh, you can ask Joe May. Um, he, uh, he went through winter with a swarm smaller than his hand. And he's in uh, uh, South uh, Indiana. And it gets a lot colder out there than it does here. And those bees made it through. So the, the size of the box is smaller, meaning they don't have to heat up as much. The bee cluster is smaller, meaning they don't have to eat as much. So it's just common sense, it works. And I, this is what we overwinter through. So if they're doing it up north, uh, it's something to experiment with, but like uh, the Michael Bush said, he said, experiment with it. Try one or two nukes first. See how that works out. Don't turn your whole colony into a bunch of nukes. Try a handful of them, see how it works out for you. And here in Georgia, we're in North Georgia, from here south, of course you can do it. It's, it's no problem at all. And, and you can't up north too, you just got, experiment play around with it see how it works out for you it, but it, if they are doing it anybody can do it so that's today's video was it like i said that honey now getting back on the honey again if if you are honey bound pull that honey out if you've been feeding your bees you don't want to eat it set it out into a robin box set it put it in a box out in the field uh, way away from your hives and they'll find it that way all the bees will share it and they'll divide it up among the hives it won't go back to one colony so that's one way of doing it and then you can always put a a, a starter strip in and let them start over or you can go into another colony that maybe doesn't have as much honey trade out a a, a frame 
that may be already drawn out but doesn't have anything in it draw that in there that would be even more that would even be better that's perfect that queen can start laying immediately they don't have to draw anything out so that's that's ways of doing that right there so uh, I get to talking and, and I draw these videos out videos out pretty long but uh, stuff starts coming to me and I'd like to share it um, but that's about it for today's video and please join our page on Facebook Barnyard Bees Inc Incorporated uh, please like our videos uh, please subscribe and thanks for watching Barnyard Bees.